I have made a lot of mistakes in my photography career. I've made pricing mistakes. I've made marketing mistakes. I've made positioning mistakes. I once fell off a giant rock slab in the middle of the desert on an assisting assignment. Guess what stopped my fall? A cactus about this big with giant black thorns. I ended up in the ER for that one. I also got thrown to the ground by Secret Service while I was trying to photograph Al Gore. My mistake, surprised him in the dark, threw me down in front of all the other journalists. It's kind of embarrassing. The point is I make mistakes all the time. A minute ago, I had my audio recorder and I was like, why does this sound so, sound so bad? It was because I forgot to put my headphones on. They were around my neck. I make mistakes all the time. The key is to not make the same mistake twice. Don't do what I do, but just in case you want to do what I do and you want to make the same mistake I do, let me explain it to you. I come up with a project idea. Then I say to myself, I'm going to go spend four or five years working on this project and I know exactly how I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to shoot it on black and white, 35 millimeter Tri-X in my Leica. And then I put that aside. And then just before I go, I say to myself, but you know what? I also have a Hasselblad. And if I put color in the Hasselblad, I could use it to shoot portraits and those would accompany the 35 black and white very nicely. And so I put that aside, but that's it. Two techniques, I'm drawing the line. But then right before I go, I say, you know, I also have a Polaroid. And if I just use a Polaroid for this little tiny piece of the project, and then I combine that with the color square and the black and white 35, it's gonna be magical. But that's it, I'm drawing the line. Three techniques, no more. But then I get in my car, and right before I start the car, I go, you know, I, if I'm taking the Hasselblad, I might as well put some black and white 120 in because maybe I need a black and white square every now and then because a black and white square with the color square and the black and white 35 and the Polaroid, it'll be magical, but that's it. I'm drawing the line, four techniques. I'm not taking anything else. Then I get in the car and right before I start it, I think, nope, that's it. That's all I'm taking. And I start it and then I turn the car off and I go, but wait a second. What about the, the clickbait, the trailer, the teaser, all those cell phone, mobile phone things. I better take my mobile phone. Five techniques because the mobile phone and the Polaroid and the black and white square and the color square and the black and white 35, it'll be magical but that's it, I'm drawing the line, five techniques. Then I go for five years and I waste my life and waste my time because when I come back with a combination of five different techniques, you know what I have? You know what I've done? I've created something that stupefies quantum mechanics mathematicians. No one can figure that out. You can't take that much content and that differing content and form something cohesive. It's almost impossible. And what you're doing is you're convincing yourself you're making progress when you aren't. Because if you put a roll of color film in a Hasselblad, you can take pictures of your feet and they will look amazing. And you'll tell yourself, holy cow, those are the best feet pictures I've ever seen. That's gonna be the cover of the book but they're not good feet pictures. They're not even good pictures in general. It's not that you can't make good pictures with the Hasselblad, but the fall off and the 6-6 six, six and the square and all that stuff, it just makes you think you're making progress. The key here is don't do what I do. Don't make that same mistake. Choose one technique, then go spend five years. Just one technique, five years, three years, four years, whatever it is. If you're lucky, if you're talented and you're diligent, you might end up with a project and whatever you end up with, chances are will be far more cohesive and easier to repurpose, outsource, show off, etc. So don't make the same mistake I do. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Milner, you went to public school, you got a bachelor's in photojournalism, and you were a solid C student, and yet you continue to make these mistakes. Why on earth would you do that? How could you keep making the same mistake? And I think it's a combination of factors. It's a combination of fear, combination of insecurity, and it's a combination of the, the changes in the photography community that started about 15 years ago, basically in the late, little, little longer than that, late 1990s, when all the new technology came in, and that's both digital cameras and also the internet. And what arrival of those things did was it shortened everybody's timeline. And instead of the 10-year project, what became the overriding factor was get famous fast. That, that became the overriding factor in photography. And that still continues to this day, in my opinion, and it's much more amplified today. So if you still don't believe me, let me introduce you to my New Mexico project. Now, I started this project at least 10 years ago. Uh, around the time, a little after the, uh, the time I moved to New Mexico. And my original decision was to shoot black and white 35 millimeter. And now within the bulk of black and white 35 millimeter, I think I have a subset, a group of what I would call standalone images. These I think are images that are good, regardless of the project that could live on their own as individual, idea, uh, individual images. These are incredibly difficult to make and they're incre incredibly few and far between. And I think that's true of any project for any photographer in the world. Then I decided to throw in the color square. And I did that because I had been working on this project for years, but I only had a handful of images to show for it because those black and white 35 images are so hard to make and so few and far between. So I thought to myself, oh, I'll throw the color in and I'll shoot portraits and then I'll be able to build a secondary body of work with portraiture or details of certain places and certain things. And then I'll think to myself, oh, I'm making progress. Then, because that wasn't enough, 
I threw in the black and white six by six, the black and white square, because hey, why not? Because maybe I'll convince myself I'll have a third theme running. And then on top of it all, I did throw in the Polaroids. And the Polaroids were not a big, giant, beautiful Polaroid. They were the Fujiroids and they were the small size, or I guess it's the medium size. They're a different aspect ratio. The quality of the lens is terrible. They require scanning at a very high level to get these up to any kind of good size and replication. Then you have to spot all of them. You see where I'm going here. The black and white square, the color square, the Polaroid, the mobile phone, all of this stuff distracted from the fact I should have kept at the 35 millimeter black and white and just lived with the fact that it was gonna be slim picking. I was gonna be in a caloric, a photographic caloric deficit for a long time, but that is the nature of long-term documentary photography. There is no way around it. You simply cannot make a body of work in two days and expect it to be good. You cannot make a body of work in a super short amount of time and expect it to be good. It just doesn't work that way. And so no matter what you do and how many other techniques you add in or Photoshop or filters or layers or, or overly designing your, your, the work that you end up with, ultimately it does not work in the long run. Stick to one format.